Okay, so today's question is how can cervical and uterine infections impact miscarriage? Hey there, welcome to Ask the Fertility Experts, a daily Q&A show where we'll be answering your fertility questions. I'm Sarah Clark, founder of Fab Fertile. We specialize in low AMH, high FSH, diminished ovarian reserve, and premature ovarian insufficiency or failure. I will be joined by Dr. Tabitha Barber. She is triple board certified in obstetrics, gynecology, menopause, and functional medicine. If you have a question, simply go to Fab Fertile Inc. on Instagram, leave me a DM and drop your question there. And we will answer your question on an upcoming show. That's Fab Fertile Inc. on Instagram. Take care. Okay. So today's question is how can cervical and uterine infections impact miscarriage? Um, yeah, this is really important to, again, if there are infections in there to address this and with the, you know, the vaginal microbiome, we're talking about the gut microbiome, the oral microbiome, the, the, you know, that there's that your, your whole body is, you know, filled with trillions of, uh, microorganisms. So, um, it's interesting too, with, the with the infections, like if there's been bacterial vaginosis or, um, any kind of infections in there, you know, to, just to make sure that these, that this has been ruled out. So what's your take then on cervical and uterine infections for uh, related to miscarriage, Dr. Tabitha? Yeah. So anytime the microbiome is imbalanced, you run the risk of having a hostile environment, you know, things are inflamed. All of these microscopic chemicals are produced that are trying to attack the infection, but they attack everything that's in there. And so if you have an egg that's trying to implant or you have a pregnancy that's already started, you run the risk of that tissue also being attacked and infected. So you know, in conventional obstetrics, we rule out the big stuff. When a woman first gets pregnant, we will check for gonorrhea and chlamydia. And if there's any obvious signs of abnormal discharge consistent with BV or uh, yeast infection from Canada, we will do a swab to rule that out, but that isn't standard. So you can have an imbalanced microbiome in the vagina and those bacteria can easily go through the cervix into the uterus and cause disruption. So we know for sure that bacterial vaginosis is associated with preterm contractions. Um, but we haven't been able to prove that treating it gets rid of or, or decreases your risk of preterm delivery. So there's a big piece missing in conventional medicine. And it's because we're focused on just trying to kill off one certain bad organism, as opposed to trying to balance the entire microbiome. It's a whole society of multiple organisms living in there. And we really don't focus on supporting the good beneficial bacteria like the lactobacillus and things like that in the vagina. And so those are all severely impacted by your gut and your diet. So it depends on what's living in your gut. It depends on the food you're eating. It's very common for women eating processed diets and you know, high sugar diets, simple carbohydrates to have recurrent yeast and bacterial vaginosis infections. And, you know, as a conventional obstetrician, I would see it all the time. Women would just continue to get antibiotics and diflucan and be in this vicious cycle. And no one said, Hey, wait a minute, we need to revamp your diet and we need to support your vaginal microbiome with good probiotics. And, if you do that, you can break that vicious cycle. But until then, if you're constantly taking antibiotics and diflucan and just continuing to try to kill off and never support, then you're running the risk of killing off your gut microbiome as well, because, you know, metronidazole or flagyl is the most commonly used medication for bacterial vaginosis that will wipe out half your gut microbiome. And so you really are doing yourself a disservice when you just call up and say, can I have more flagell? Can I have more diflucan? Because 
you're you're not solving the problem. You're just putting another Band-Aid on. So I think it's really important that we start to think about supporting our microbiome and doing what's beneficial for the vaginal microbiome. And that is eating clean whole foods, get away from the processed stuff in the bars and the bags. Oh my goodness. The granola bars, those are horrible for your vagina. (laughs) All of the fruit drinks, you know, drinking a bottle of kombucha, you think you're doing yourself a favor because there's probiotics, but that's almost all sugar. And once you get back into balance, your vagina will let you know if you're off track again, because it will be so much more obvious. It, you know, I see women all the time who are struggling and they never feel healthy and balanced down there. And when we finally make some headway and get things cleaned up, And they go and they do something stupid, you know, they have like an extra large ice cream cone and a glass of wine, like their vagina lets them know it's a little more obvious at that point. So you don't need to be in that vicious cycle and it will help you with your fertility without a doubt. Yeah, this is something that I struggle with personally. So yeast infections, bacterial vaginosis, all of this, not until I clean up my diet and you know, it's not a perfect, perfect situation by any means, but I, I know the triggers. And if they say, if you have that go down a gluten-free granola uh, craze, then yeah, things, things kind of get out of balance. So it's interesting to see the correlation, but for years I took antibiotics and destroyed yeah. my gut health, wiped it all out. Um, not until I really, you know, it's that diet and lifestyle and it's not about taking antibiotics. That's a band aid Cause I was always like, give me the fast, the, you know, the quick fix. And in this, in this, in this situation, that just made things a hundred times worse. So just with this one, um, if, so if you don't have any symptoms of that, um, but you've had miscarriage, is there anything you'd recommend then to, to like to, so you don't have any symptoms of yeast or bac- uh, bacterial vaginosis, um, but you've had miscarriage, what would you do for like the, the, sw- the swab there or anything that you would recommend? Yes. So now there's awesome companies coming out who have traditionally done, you know, gut microbiome testing in this. And we've understood that now we can test the vaginal microbiome. So you can do swabs to see what's living in there. Who's running the show. Do you have yeast overgrowth? Do you have urea plasma or other bad things? Or do you have good lactobacillus? You get to see everything that's living in there and get a better understanding. So it's not just a test to look for infection. It's a test to look for balance. And that's amazing. So I would encourage women to seek that out. You're not going to get it from your conventional gynecologist. Thanks so much for being here. If you've got a question that you want answered, simply go to Fab Fertile Inc. on Instagram, send me a DM and we will answer your question on an upcoming show. That's Fab Fertile Inc. and send me a DM and please refer to our disclaimer below. Take care. 